let me welcome you to this lecture we have earlier looked at the uh, different elements of symmetry in tetrahedron as well as in octahedron and what we have seen is that these uh, molecules or molecules belonging uh, having tetrahedral geometry or octahedral geometry are highly symmetric as these molecules contain multiple uh, proper axes of symmetry of order higher than two so there is another um, structure or geometry which is of interest here that is the icosahedron which is again a highly symmetric archimedean solid and it again contains multiple proper axis of symmetry of order higher than two so we will look at the or we will try to identify the uh, different elements of symmetry in the icosahedron and uh, what we will do is that we will we will find out the different symmetry operations in the icosahedron now there are total uh, in case of tetrahedron we have seen there there are 24 symmetry operations and in case of octahedron we have seen there are 48 symmetry operations and in case of the icosahedron or icosahedral geometry there are 120 symmetry operations so as the number of symmetry operations are pretty high in case of the icosahedron you may feel that it is difficult to identify all the symmetry operations but if we proceed systematically that is if we draw the uh, if, we, if we try to visualize the uh, symmetry element by drawing the uh, configurations that is after, before initial configuration and the configuration that we are going to get after performing a symmetry operation with respect to the symmetry element then it will be easy for us to visualize the different elements of symmetry in the icosahedron so let us proceed with that and first what we will do is that we will draw the icosahedral geometry which is uh, so when you draw the icosahedron it is important that you draw it in a symmetric way Way to draw it and to go down the board with bit, or else There are two crowns, there is a top crown and then there is a bottom crown in case of the icosahedron. So you make these bones bold here, so that just to give the impression that this is the face which is facing us and it will make identifying the different elements of symmetry easier. So this is our, these are bold bones here, not dashed, we 
because this is the face which is facing us. And the dash bones essentially mean that these faces are behind us, so behind the plane of this board. So we are done with uh, drawing this uh, icosahedron. And if you notice carefully, uh, in case of tetrahedron, we know there are four triangular faces, and in case of octahedron, there are eight triangular faces, and that is why you call it tetra or uh, octahedron. Now, in case of icosahedron, we have uh, 20 tetrahedral faces, uh, sorry, triangular faces. You can level these triangular faces in the icosahedron and find out whether we have 20 triangular faces or not. And then we have also, there are 12 vertex that you and let us uh, level these uh, vertexes as 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, and 12. So this will, by leveling, it will help us to uh, identify the position of each of these vertex once we perform the symmetry uh, operation. And then apart from uh, that, we also can count and then find out that there are 30 edges in uh, the icosahedron. So now let us try to identify different elements of symmetry in the icosahedron. And I am sure you all can identify at least one element of symmetry. That is apart from the identity element, we have Another element of symmetry. So, just to make our life easy, let me also draw another icosahedron over here so that we can find out the or we can draw the final orientation of the icosahedron or position of the different apexes after we perform a symmetry operation. So I'll draw another icosahedron over here and then proceed to identify different elements of symmetry in the icosahedron. So we have another icosahedron over here. Now, one element that we say to be, it is easy to identify in the icosahedron is the C5 axis of symmetry. One can easily, uh, by looking at this picture, we can easily uh, find out that because there are two pentagonal uh, pentagons in the icosahedron over here with the two apical positions 1 and 12 over here, so one can easily identify that there is a C5 axis of symmetry in this uh, icosahedron and this C5 axis of symmetry passes through position 1 and position 12 and what you can do is you can increase C5 operation and then draw uh, the final position of different apexes after you perform this C5 operation. So position 1 and position 12 because they are they lie on the C5 axis of symmetry here, so they are not going to change uh, position when we do C5 op operation, but uh, say when we do operation in uh, this direction, that is uh, the C5 operation, then position 2 will come to position of 3, 3 will move to 4, while 4 will go to 5, 5 will go to 6, and here also 
uh, same things, you know, the same way the apexes are going to move. And the, because this is a indistinguishable configuration, we arrive at once we do C5 operation, so we have a C5 axis of symmetry. Now we have seen in case of octahedron as well as in case, in case of the tetrahedron that in case of tetrahedron we have seen that there are uh, four C3 axis of symmetry that is the principal axis in this case in case of tetrahedron is the C5 axis of symmetry and there were four such C5, C5, uh, C, sorry in case of tetrahedron it is the C3 axis of symmetry and there were four such C3 axis of symmetry in tetrahedron. Similarly in case of uh, octahedron we have seen the principal axis of, of symmetry is the uh, C4 axis of symmetry and there were three such C4 axis of symmetry in the octahedron. Now that should immediately lead us to ask this question that we have found out one or we have identified one C5 axis of symmetry in case of the icosahedron. Are there any other C5 axis of symmetry in the icosahedron? So if you look carefully the answer is going to be yes because Again, like in case of octahedron or tetrahedron, all the apexes are essentially identical. The same is true in case of uh, icosahedron. There are 12 vertex and all these 12 vertex are essentially identical to each other. And that is why if we choose any two opposite pairs of apexes and then you know pass an axis through these uh, apexes, then it is going to be a C5 axis of symmetry. So uh, we have taken already we have seen uh, when we take the position 1 and position 12, then the pentagonal plates are essentially formed by the points 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 and similarly there is another pentagonal plan below which is formed by position 7, 8, 9, 10 and 11. So the C5 axis of symmetry passes through the center of these two pentagons. So now if we take say a position 3 over here and the uh, opposite apex, so uh, apex which is opposite to the position 3 that is position 10 and then pass an uh, axis uh, through these two points then if you look carefully we will see again two pentagons through the center of which this axis is going to pass through that is if you take the apex 3 and 10 and pass an axis through these two points then we will see one pentagon that is 1, 2, 7, 8, and 4, 1, 2, 7, 8, 4 forms one, one the top pentagon and the bottom pentagon is going to be formed by the position 5, 6, 11, 12, and 9. So that is again 5, 6, 11, 12, and 9. These for, through these uh, points we will have another pentagon and through the center of these two pentagons the C5 axis of symmetry passes through. So what we have seen is that if we choose any two opposite pair of apexes and passes pass an axis through these two points, so we will have it will, this this axis will essentially be a C5 axis of symmetry. So since there are 12 vertex in an octahedron in an icosahedron, so there should be if we pass uh, one axis through two opposite uh, vertexes, then we should have total six such C5 axis of symmetry and we have already identified two such C5 axis of symmetry. So you should do, you should identify one such C5 axis of symmetry and then do a C5 rotation and then draw the resulting uh, configuration over here to and to just to verify that whether we are performing a symmetry operation or not. So what we have identified already is that there are Total of six C5 axis of symmetry in a icosahedron, and the C5 axis of symmetry, each of these C5 axis of symmetry can generate the symmetry operations C5 1, C5 2, C5 3, and C5 4, while C5 5 is going to be identity, and that is why uh, total four unique. Uh, symmetry operations are generated by each of these C5 axis of symmetry and the six C5 axis of symmetry will essentially that is why give us total six into four 
that is 24 symmetry operations. So apart from identity operation, so that is one operation, we have now identified another a set of symmetry operations generated by the six C5 axis of symmetry in the icosahedra. So then let us proceed further and then uh, uh, ask, uh, ask the question whether we have uh, any other proper axis of symmetry in case of the uh, icosahedra or maybe we should also think if any other axis of symmetry passes through the, these two you know, opposite uh, apexes or this pair of uh, opposite apexes in case of the icosahedron, the answer is yes, they, there are improper axes of symmetry which are collinear to the C5 axis of symmetry. That is, the, uh, that is a S10 axis of symmetry can be, you know, we can have a S10 axis of symmetry which are collinear to the C5 axis of symmetry. And now if we look from the top of this icosahedron, what we will see, we will see uh, two pentagons essentially which are eclipsed or which are sorry staggered to each other so the pentagons are not eclipsed yet they are staggered and if we draw the pentagons top pentagon and the bottom pentagon from the top if you see we will see this pentagon first that is two three four five six and that is with the top pentagon uh, written with solid lines over here and the bottom pentagon written with dashed line will be formed by seven eight nine ten and eleven and the position 1 and position 12 are essentially going to lie at the center of these uh, two pentagons. So now if we we have seen already that this essentially through this uh, position 1 and position 12, if we pass an axis, it's a C5 axis of symmetry. Now if we uh, coordinate to this, if we do a, a C10 operation and then do a sigma, then we will have again a so we you know, have a symmetry operation over here in distinguished configuration. So when we do C10, followed by uh, sigma H perpendicular to this C10, then we will have a symmetry operation. And that is why we have a S10 axis of symmetry also passes through position 1 and position 12, that is through, through two apexes, opposite apexes. So since there are 12 vertexes and there are six um, C5 axis of symmetry passing through these uh, opposite uh, vertexes essentially. So, and the C, S10 axis of symmetry are collinear to these uh, C5 axis of symmetry. So, we can easily identify or we can easily uh, find out that there are six S10 axis of symmetry as well, apart from these uh, C5 axis of symmetry, which are collinear to each other essentially. And this S10 axis of symmetry, if we count the number of symmetry operations generated by S10 axis of symmetry, we will find out that S10 1 is going to be S10 1 only. S10 2 will essentially be simplified as C5 1. And then we will find S10 3 is going to be a unique symmetry operation, while S10 4 is going to be C5 2. Then we have S10 5, it will give us. Uh, essentially equal to S2, which we know is, is equivalent to uh, inversion operation. So S105 is uh, inversion operation. And then S106 will give us uh, C53. And S107 is going to be a unique symmetry operation. Then S108 is going to be C54. And S1010 is going to be identity operation. So the S10 axis of symmetry generates total four unique symmetry operations, S10-1, S10-3, uh, S10-7, and S10-9 that we have not done over here. So S10-9 will also be an unique uh, symmetry operation generated by the S10 axis of symmetry. And we have also seen that apart from that, uh, apart from the symmetry operation generated by the C5 axis of symmetry, we also I've found out that this S105 is equal to inversion operation. So there must be an inversion center of symmetry in this icosahedron molecule. So, so they will account for that symmetry operation as well. So six S10 axis of symmetry, each of these S10 axis of symmetry generates four symmetry operations, and that is why six will produce again 24 operations.
And we have also found out that there is an inversion center. So we have one operation from the inversion center. So now again, we know that you know these Archimedean solids essentially tetrahedral, octahedral, icosahedral, they are triangular faces in these geometries. Now, whenever we have such triangular faces, we should look for C3 axis of symmetry in these uh, geometries and we have seen that in case of tetrahedron or in case of octahedron also there are C3 axis of symmetry. Now, in case of, uh, and these C3 axis of symmetry essentially passes through the center of the triangular faces, both in case of the tetrahedron as well as in case of the octahedron. So, here also if you take the uh, opposite triangular faces in the icosahedron and pass an axis through the center of these opposite triangular faces, then this is going to be a C3 axis of symmetry. So, let us take the triangular phase 1, 2, 3 and then identify the triangular phase which is opposite to this uh, triangle 1, 2, 3 which essentially is 9, 10 and 12 is the opposite triangular phase. So, let us pass an axis through this which will essentially come out through the center of the triangular face 9, 10, and 12. And let's do a symmetry operation uh, with respect to a C3 operation with respect to this uh, C3 axis of symmetry, axis of symmetry. So then, uh, before we do that, we should also look at the icosahedron carefully and identify two more uh, triangles formed by different f-axis. So, first triangle we have seen is 1, 2, 3 forms a triangular phase of course, then we have seen that 9, 10, 12 also forms a triangular phase. But then if we look carefully here, another two triangular, uh, not faces exactly, but these are triangles formed by these vertexes only. That if we look at position 4, position 6 and position 7 and let us assume or imagine a triangle formed by these three apexes, then we have another triangle uh, which is again in staggered configuration with respect to this triangle formed by position 4, 6 and 7. 4, 6 and position 7. And the other triangle is formed by position 8, 5 and 11. So, 5. Eight, five, and eleven. So, if you assume two hypothetical triangles formed by these two set of points, what you will realize is that these set of triangles are all again staggered with respect to each other, and the way these two triangles are essentially staggered with respect to each other. If you pass through the, you know, if you look at the. Uh, look at these triangular faces uh, through these C3 axis of symmetry that is what you are going to visualize two triangular faces which are essentially staggered in this way. Similarly, this is another set of uh, triangular faces which are staggered to each other. Not triangular faces exactly, these are hypothetical triangles that we need to imagine to find out the resulting configuration while doing this C3 operation. So let us do this C3 operation. When we do this C3 operation, we know that if we do rotate in this way, then 2 is going to come to the position of 3. So let's write 2 over here and 3 will go to the position of 1 and 1 will come over here. And similarly, this bottom triangle over here, 9 will go to the position of 10. So this is 9 and 10 will be here and 12 will be here. So now, because we have identified other triangles as well, so this will allow us to find out the configuration after doing the C3 operation through this particular C3 axis. So 4 will move to the position of 6. So this is 4 after I do the C3. And uh, then 7 will move to the position of 4. So this is 7. And 4 plus uh, and 6 is going to come to the position. Seven, because that is again 
uh, imaginative triangle that we have seen how uh, and that allows us you know to predict the final configuration or position of these apexes after a 2D CSV operation. So similarly, uh, these these uh, these three points again are going to that is the, the, the triangle formed by 8, 5, 11. They form an imaginative triangle, and these positions are going to you know swell into each other once I do the CSV operation. So 8 will come to the position of 5. So this is 8 and 5 will go to the position of 11, so this is 5, and 11 is going to come to the position of 8. So that is how I can, we can draw the final configuration or final position of different apexes that we have numbered over here after we do the C3-1 operation with respect to this C3 axis of symmetry, and from here what we can say is that what we have done is a symmetry operation, and there is a C3 axis of symmetry which is passing through the center of these two triangular faces in the icosahedron. So now we have already uh, identified that there are 20, total 20 triangular faces in the icosahedron. So these 20, through these 20 triangular faces or through the 10 pairs of opposite triangular faces in the icosahedron, there will be 10 C3 axis of symmetry passing through these 10 triangular, uh, opposite triangular faces uh, of uh, the icosahedron, and we have total of 10 C3 axis of symmetry in the icosahedron. So we know C3, each of these C3 axis of symmetry can produce two unique symmetry operations that is C3 1 and C3 2. So 10 C3 axis will essentially give us 20. C3 operations. Then we have uh, again we have seen in case of the octahedron that uh, through the the, the, the collinear to the C3 axis of symmetry in octahedron we have S6 axis of symmetry and here also we should find we should try to figure out if there are S6 axis of symmetry which are collinear to this C3 axis of symmetry and if you if you Look carefully, you will find that there are indeed S6 axis of symmetry which are collinear to the C3 axis of symmetry and we will again uh, do the same exercise that is we will do a C6 operation and then we will do sigma H which is you know, perpendicular to the uh, C6 axis of symmetry and then we will find out or we will try to figure out if If it is a symmetry operation, so let us do C6 operation with respect to the same uh, the, the, the C6 operation with respect to uh, this particular axis, which passes through the triangular faces one, center of these triangular faces one, two, three, and nine, ten, twelve. So when we do C6 operation, we know that the position two will not reach over here, and instead it will reach somewhere over here that is above. The, uh, the 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 point where the uh, where you know initially the uh, the bottom triangular face or at positions which are occupied by the bottom triangular face is there actually so it is above not exactly on the position where the bottom triangular face is there but it is above the bottom triangular face and that is why uh, when we do this uh, this C six operation position two will essentially lie. On a position which is above this uh, uh, this position initial position of this uh, 12 over here and when we, when we do the reflection we just perpendicular to the uh, c6 axis of symmetry over here or c6 axis because we do not have c6 axis of symmetry we have c6 we consider this c6 for the purpose of s6 axis of symmetry only and when we do the sigma perpendicular to the c6 the position 2 will come reach the position of 12 because these triangles essentially get swept into each other when we do S6 operation again. So this is similar to what we do in case of octahedron. So that should convince us that position 2 will reach the position of 12 over here 
when we do the the, the, the S61 symmetry operation through this particular S6 axis of symmetry. And similarly, uh, the 3 will reach the position of 9 here, and uh, 1 will reach the position of 10, and these are essentially swept. So, so then 9 will reach the position of 1 here. And 10 will reach the position of 2 here, and 12 will reach the position of 3 over here. So 12 is going to be here. And similarly, again, these triangles that we have, hypothetical triangles that we have considered earlier, which are again, you know, in a fashion which are staggered to each other. And that is why these will also get swept when we do S6 operation, that is 4 will move to a position which is above 5 before we do the, uh, when we do the C6, but before performing the sigma. So after we do sigma, this 4 will uh, go to the position of uh, 5. So this is where the 4 is going to come. And similarly, we have uh, 6 will come to the position which is above 11 and once we do the sigma it will come to the position of 11 so this is 6 and then uh, 7 we see that it is going to come above 8 but when we do sigma it is going to come to the position of 8 over here so this is how 4, 6 and 7 uh, you know the final configuration of this position 4, 6 and 7 after we do uh, C6 followed by sigma perpendicular to C6, that is S61 operation, S61 operation, and 5 we see once we do uh, the once we do the uh, C6 uh, C6 operation, 5 will come uh, to, to a position which is, is initially at the bottom of this uh, 6, and after we do sigma, 5 will reach the position of 6 over here, and similarly. Uh, 5, 8 will come to the position of 4, 8 is going to be here, and then what we are left with is uh, 8, 5, and 11 is going to be over 7 over here. So that is how we can again draw the final configuration after doing the S6 operation through this particular S6 axis of symmetry. What I suggest is that you can consider any other axis, S6 axis of symmetry. Say, for example, you take the S6 axis of symmetry which passes through the triangles 1, 4, and 5, and 7, 11, and 12, and then do the S6 operation, and then try to draw the final configuration that you are going to get after doing the S6 operation. Then I'm sure it will be easy to visualize these axis of symmetry or how you know, the, the positions move once you do the S6 symmetry operation. So now what we have done is that we have identified one S6 axis of symmetry which again passes through the center of two opposite triangular faces. There are 20 triangular faces. So there are 10 pairs of such opposite triangular faces in the icosahedron and there are 10 S6 axis of symmetry passing through these 10 opposite sets of triangular faces. And each of the S6 axis of symmetry, if we see now, generate how many symmetry operations? That is, S61 is unique symmetry operation, S62 will be C31, S63 is going to be again inversion, and S64 is C32, and S65 is a Unique symmetry operation while S66 is going to be equal to identity operation. So two symmetry operations or two unique symmetry operations are generated by each of these S6 axis of symmetry and 10 such S6 axis of symmetry will give us 20 operations again from these 10 S6 axis of symmetry. So now we are we have identified C5 axis of symmetry, C3 axis of symmetry, S6 axis of symmetry, and S10 
axis of symmetry. So we should look if there are any other axis of symmetry, or proper axis or improper axis of symmetry in the icosahedron. And if you look carefully, what you will find that through the center or through the two opposite bisecting two opposite edges in the icosahedron, there is a C2 axis of symmetry over here. So if I take a C2 axis of symmetry which bisects this edge over here and this edge which is opposite to this edge. So and consider an axis which bisects these two edges uh, which and passes through both of these two edges and bisects them. So that is going to be a C2 axis of symmetry because the top triangle that is 3, 4 and 8 will essentially become so when we do this C2 operation, let us draw the final configuration that we are going to get after doing this C2 operation. So what we can easily figure out that 1 will reach the position of 12 and 12 will go to 1 when we do rotate by 180 degree through this axis. The triangle which is facing us, 3, 4 and 8 will move uh, behind us, that is behind the plane of this board and it will essentially get inverted when we do C2 operation and it will come to the position of 6, 11 and 10. So 8 will go to the position of 6 here and 3 will go to the position of 11 here and 4 will come to the position of 10 here and similarly the bottom triangle as we have done uh, this way this is going to be 6 here and 11 is over here and 10 is over here. So bottom triangle comes facing us here and again these two positions these are going to get swept with each other that is easily we can find out that when we do C2 operation 2 and 7 and 5 and 9 will also swap each other. So that is what is the final configuration that we obtain after we do this C2 operation. And what we should notice again is that this C2 axis of symmetry passes through or bisects two opposite edges in the uh, icosahedron. Now we have already counted that there are 30 such edges in uh, the icosahedron and all of these edges are equivalent to each other essentially. So we can take the opposite uh, pairs of edges in the icosahedron and then pass a C2 axis through these opposite 15 opposite uh, pair of edges in the icosahedron and then we'll have uh, 15 C2 axis of symmetry in the icosahedron. So we have 15 uh, C2 axis of symmetry in the icosahedron and these 15 C2 axis of symmetry again produces one one symmetry operation each is each of these C2 axis of symmetry produces one symmetry operation that is C2 operation and 15 C2 will give us 15 operations essentially. So now we are left with, uh, we have found out all these uh, axis of symmetry in the icosahedron and we need to now identify if there are any plane of symmetry in the icosahedron. So we can do that again if we look very carefully at the icosahedron, it's a symmetric structure and it's not difficult to identify a uh, plane of symmetry in the icosahedron. At least one plane of symmetry, what we can do is that we can simply bisect the icosahedron in this way, just pass one plane of symmetry or plane through this bisecting, uh, going through position 1, 6, 8 and 12 and then you will realize we are doing a plane, uh, reflection, we can do a reflection operation which is going to be a symmetry operation. Uh, so if we do this sigma passing through position 1, 6, uh, 8 and 12, so it passes through two of the opposite edges, what we see, 1, 6 is one edge and 8, 12 is the edge which is opposite to the uh, 1, 6 edge over here and this plane of symmetry passes through uh, two opposite edges again and then what we are going to have is the final position 1 and 6 does not change, 8 and 12 also does not change when we do the reflection operation but other positions 3 and 4 are going to get swept so this is 4, I'm sorry, this is going to be 3 
and this is 4. Similarly, 2 and 5 are going to get swept here, and 9 and 7 we are going to get swept, while 10 and 11 are also going to get swept. So this is 10 and this is 11 then. So this is what is the kind of configuration that we obtain after doing this sigma. Now again we should notice is that this sigma we have done or this sigma exists uh, when it passes through two of the or two of the opposite edges are contained in this uh, particular sigma and also the C5 axis of symmetry which passes through position 1 and uh, 12 as well as the, the another C5 axis of symmetry are there, this is passing through the position 6 and 8 because these are two opposite apexes. There is a C5 axis of symmetry which passes through this position 8 and uh, 6. So that C5 axis of symmetry is also contained within this particular plane of symmetry. So this uh, uh, plane of symmetry essentially uh, passes through uh, two C5 axis of symmetry as well as you know it is really passed through a pair of opposite uh, edges and since we know that there are 30 edges in the icosahedron there are 15 such uh, opposite pair of edges in the icosahedron and through these 15 opposite pair of edges there are 15 such plane of symmetry are going to pass through and there are 15 uh, sigma are present in these uh, in the icosahedron. So each of these sigma are going to produce one symmetry operation that is sigma only and there are going to be total 15 symmetry operations or reflection operations produced by this plane of symmetry. So now we are done with finding all the symmetry operations in the icosahedron. If you count all the symmetry operations that is identity operation, one operation, uh, there is uh, 24 four operations, the C5 operations, so 25 over here, then 24 S10 operation that will be equal to 49 operations and then one inversion operation will make it 50 operations total, then 20 C3 and 20 S6, so that will 40 over here, so 50 plus 40, 90 symmetry operations and 90 plus 15 C2 plus 15 Sigma cement operations will essentially uh, 30 operations here and 90 plus 30 is going to be equal to 120 symmetry operations probably we have found out in case of the icosahedron. So these are the all 120 symmetry operations in the icosahedron. So what we have seen is that one needs to draw the icosahedron as well as you know while trying to figure out the symmetry operation, we had to imagine uh, or imagine hypothetical uh, triangular triangles inside the icosahedron so that we can find out the final position of the different uh, uh, apexes after we did symmetry operation. And that essentially allows us to figure out the final configuration, final position after we do it with symmetry operation. So this is the way to find out symmetry operations or identify or visualize symmetry operations in a highly symmetric structure or in any other structure. You need to be a little bit imaginative and then try to figure out the final position by drawing the final position in this way by numbering the these different positions, one, two, three, four, and that, will, that essentially helps us to uh, figure out the final uh, configuration and to this allows essentially us to uh, identify the symmetry operations or elements in the uh, geometry. So this essentially brings us to the end of this lecture. We have figured out or we have visualized, identified all the different elements of symmetry in icosahedron as well as we have found out all the 120 symmetry operations in this uh, icosahedral geometry. So, let me conclude this lecture with this and I thank you very much for being with me during this lecture.